All right, welcome back, everybody. Got the second round here. We'll be following White Fox as they play U.S. Army on OP First Light here. Second round of AAS. Following the match down at 100 tickets. We'll be following White Fox and uh, 303. You can see them out in the distance there. Charging out to their objectives. White Fox sending some guys to the village and out to train station. Something to note, um, for the viewers out there, you see one person going to one of these first caps. I don't know if it's uh, if you guys know or not, but uh, you only need one person to capture a neutral flag at the beginning of a game. Right. Yeah. So, so that's the... why you only see Frosty on one and uh, Mista, I think it is, on uh, White Fox. Yeah, yeah, saving saving those uh, resources so they can get um, get their team where they need to be focused, hyper focused, quickly Absolutely. as possible. Seeing a fob dropped already there for White Fox. As they move in, utilizing these map markers here. But everybody, when they pull that map up, they can quickly look at what the squad leaders and what everybody's communicating about, where the enemy movement are, where they should be attacking from, stuff like that. That's what they that's why they use those map markers there. So off the break, uh, already we've got a little bit more of a focus from through a third on that central ridge line. Of course, it's kind of easy for them to do that because it's right there in front of them on the militia side. But uh and see how it goes. Uh, White Fox looks like... Yep, see? You can see why Fox is on that central ridge line. They're sitting there waiting because they know somebody's going to be coming down that thing. More than likely. So, this might be... go The center ridge line right now is going to be about to be a good little either ambush or contact one or the other. Yep, absolutely. And if a team does roll in on storage hot and heavy and you you get pushed off of storage, if, you're, if one of your squads pushes up on that ridge line early in the game, you have tons of flexibility in terms of turning left or right out of that area and being able to either a support storage or b support rail so it's always good yep. to have that have that early game rush out to the middle it, it really almost comes down to whoever gets there first right <laughs> it, it literally does uh, because whoever gets there first gets gets the cover advantage like white fox has so you can see where they're at right now right they can shoot all the way up that ridge line and uh it's vice versa if they're a third were to be pushing all the way down to that ridge line where white fox is now They'll have cover for the other direction. So it, it literally comes down to whoever gets there first. Hello. Yes. Hello. So White Fox with the hold on the center ridge. Three oh third moving in. Probably at least two squads at this point uh, down on storage, but White Fox already moving into the compound as well. See smoke grenades coming out from the 303rd. Coner out there skirmishing in the woods. Got a single White Fox guy way out to the east. White Fox now has two fobs up. Either side's flanking Nilrim. They've got two yep. fobs. A little bit of a risky move there. 303's able to find those fobs. It's going to be a huge ticket drain for them. They've got to be close to capping Nilrim at this point. And then the fight will be on for storage. 303rd, most of the squad that rolled in is down. Fire Potato's still up. Clearing bodies. There we go, we see the U.S. Army capture, so that's White Fox capture of Nilrim. Let's see what they do in terms of pushing on storage. Yep. Looks like White Fox has that Western Hill on lock as well. There's got a whole squad up there. We got 303rd talking about needing to build a uh, secondary fob out in the west. Uh, do they have one down? I'm assuming just north of uh, storage. They do. It's, it's essentially in G6. Ah... Uh... Ah, okay. That explains the uh, the push out east right now. So, good little fight. Squad versus a squad over here on the center ridge line right now. White Fox getting control of uh, storage itself. Looks like 303 is trying to push back in from the north. Ah, 
absolutely no comms from these guys. Yeah. Very quiet on both sides. They, it does, it probably makes sense that they're using a secondary, you know, team speak or something like that. Because eh. the, their fobs are going up in, in pre-located places, but we're not, we're not hearing that. They might be talking just on squad and local. Uh, I've been hanging around them. I haven't been hearing anything, really. Yeah. No real reason for that. I mean, you can communicate just fine with the endgame. That's yep. what it's there for. So it's designed to be the way it is. Exactly. That whole system was basically tested for 10 years with PR, and it's a pretty exactly. good system. Right and true. Yeah, you've always had a lot of people that, uh, you know, that, that try to, quote-unquote, fight back against the devs on, you know, if you if at least these guys are using proximity chat, that the, um, you could hear the enemies or talk back, you know, back and forth, but, you know, the, the developer response is always, the second we do something like that, everyone leaves to TeamSpeak. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? That the, exactly. That's, you want to preserve everyone using in-game comms. That's the, the biggest thing about squad, or one of... Absolutely. And it works just fine. Especially, you know, later on in their own whenever speaking to individual squad leaders. There's a lot of uh, contact out there in the Far East, those yep. guys. Yeah, I'm covering down on them right now. Well, three or thirds pushing into the compound now. And there's only uh, one defender left alive, it looks like. Yeah, and he's on the western side. So yeah, that's looks like they've smashed it real good. Well, you see, yeah, see if 303 starts to pull in there more. I think there's a lone white fox guy looking for a fob. I think they already looking into that fob on the east side. 303 has taken down that center fob, unless it was taken down, and now they have one up in the north, uh, northwest of, uh, northwest of uh, storage. Oh, three or thirds just been pushed out by a single white fox guy. Where at? Um, we're in the, the uh, yeah, storage area. We got three or third, three or third asking for some people to fall back to castle just in case. Yeah, because they don't have anybody on there right now. Not that anyone from. White Fox is pushing it currently, though. But you know, if you're 303, you don't know that. Yeah, it looks like looks like that's that's what uh, Rogue is doing right now. Rogue grenade, Frosty as well. Looks like they're they're seeding that uh, that center ridge line. And right now, you can see out east, this White Fox squad using that center ridge line as a highway, just hauling straight up the center of the map, getting yeah, right we'll see if, his see if castle. Frosty holds that off. Yep, that's where White Fox is going right now. Babylon, CPAC. Using the center ridge line and move right up to it. I'm seeing these 303 guys moving out to the west here. And I'm, I'm, it's kind of puzzling. These three, like a, a couple of these guys are engaged by storage by this White Fox uh, squad. And then you see these other 303 guys coming in from behind them, but, but running right past them. I think that's kind of a breakdown of communication there. These guys are in such close proximity, they should be calling out enemy locations to not just their squad, but all squads. Because uh, that would have been an easy wipe right there for the 303rd if they were to kind of turn around and, and hit these guys in the rear. But I am following these guys. It looks like they're on a little bit of a fob hunting mission. Slippy Cat, Bash, Sangs, and Meow down here. The 303rd. Looks like, uh, yeah, 303 is definitely seeding, just kind of pulling back to Castle right away. Do you think they look like that they were that close? Most... Say again? I was I think just gonna say, like... most of the ground. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, it looks okay. like, uh, yeah, three thirds, kind of pulling out of storage there. You know, there's a few guys left because you can see, you can see the massive guys they just pulled from main. Actually, a lot of them just respawned back on main and they're moving into castle right now. Looks so they're trying to give uh, Slippy Cat and his guys that are going wide out to the southwest right now an opportunity to try to slip around. But I think they kind of revealed themselves just now. Well, maybe not. What do you reckon their game plan is? Set up a good defense at Castle? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, you, you, you could do that. So what they might be doing is just a massive scale of what I was saying before, you know, pulling off an objective, you know, giving them pressure, pulling off, think, make, making the enemy think that you're, you know, you're backing up and giving them, you know, an idea of like, hey, you know, they're pulling back, let's push them harder, you know. So that's what White Fox might be doing right now, while through a third slips around the squad to the rear, drops a fob, and starts capping that objective. Starts capping storage, which looks like Bash and his guys are doing right now. Bash sayings meow. Slippy. And they might be able to do it. If they didn't fire anybody and that makes you, just don't let them know that they're there, they might be able to slip in and at least neutralize it and scare the crap out of White Fox. Yeah, I think they were able to get past out. those guys. Uh, there were a couple of those White Fox guys straggling out there. Uh, but they weren't able to detect those four 303rd guys, so... Yep. Sometimes that's what you want to do. Sometimes you do not want to open fire. And you want to kind of be careful. Ah, uh, you know, I'm seeing a couple of these White Fox guys coming back on their heels. I'm not sure if uh, 303rd has stumbled on their fob and tripped an alarm here. We'll see if these White Fox guys do mobilize. But that could, be an, that could definitely be an interesting late-game development if those guys are able to stay undetected back there. Yeah, definitely. They might pull most of their guys off the off of storage, which looks like they have. He's got the, that squad of the west of the hills. That's definitely something that could be a game changer. You could pull enough pressure off of the uh, the defense flag we threw at third for them to rally, and then basically have them caught in a crossfire and push back south. White Fox heading directly towards these guys. Yeah, I I think they may have tripped their fob back there. Actually, yes, they have. The, Looking yep. on my map, their fob is red, so 303rd taking their fob down. And they Things have, are digging it? They have, quite, they have definitely stirred the hornet's nest. They've now got two White Fox squads on the way. Yep, a good reaction. I don't think they're going to be able to kill that fob unless... Let's see. It's going to be interesting. They might kill it in time. Yep, they killed that, they killed that fob. That's 10 tickets from White Fox. Good play by 303rd. So now you gotta think about the resources that White Fox just dedicated to push back south again. Right. This might be a good opportunity for uh, if you go just north of those 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 guys. You see Bullet Magnet and Banshee. He's got a little four-man squad right there. They're pushing towards storage. That's an opportunity. And so seven White Fox players now distracted by that push. So now it's up mm -hmm. to these 303 guys seeing if they can push in fast enough to get on storage. And looks like they're doing. That's an opportunity. They're taking it. Very good push. Looks to me like a three or third of their A game. Hey, I mean, seeing that Net Bash's squad is just try to envelope that squad now. Um, didn't work out so well because um, Frosty is now out on his own. He's about to be flanked by that second White Fox squad now coming from the uh, northwest. Yeah. However, though, uh, if you look at Castle right now, that's that's kind of the gamble you got to play because we might get in a stalemate situation here. Because 303 just got wiped on Castle, and they've got guys inside of Castle now as well. A uh, very, very strong presence on Castle. So now they're going to have to time themselves. They right, should be so able to neutralize storage. Yeah, they should. Maybe. We'll see. I think that the White Fox, they have guys, you know, they're a little bit closer to storage than they are than uh, 303rd is closer to uh, ruins, Castle. So. I, th I think we'll be in a, a stalemate situation here in a second. We'll see. It's it's really up to these guys down over southwest if they're able to, you know, like you said, have talking guns and, and make themselves look bigger than they are. But now we're seeing three White Fox pull off of that engagement down south and uh, coming back to storage. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to get a stalemate. They're going to come back to storage, and I think those three or third guys might be able to get them. Looks like Ramley's up in those west hills just in case you can see what he's up there for. 229 on the side tickets, by the way. 276. Copy. All right. Interesting. Mostly in Banshee. And third, taking the edge here. Yep, that was a very good play by 303rd. Them pushing in where they did like that, that's exactly exactly what I was saying earlier about uh, you know, getting attention away from an objective really quick. But it, it's going to be a stalemate, given the amount of players that are on Castle right now and the amount of players that are on Storage. So it's going to be interesting to see how these te two teams react as far as getting their defend flag back and being able to cap the flag they're on. I think we're going to end up in one of those uh, dual neutral scenarios. Yeah, yeah, stalemate. That's what I'm saying. They're yep. going to be they're going to be white flagged on both sides. So, but through a third on storage also has to be coming to an entire squad that's behind him to the side. Yeah, but they have a rally. Or no, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, they must have a rally. There we go, neutral there. on both. Yep, there you go. 
So now Banshee somebody calling, has to make a sacrifice somewhere. Yep, somebody has to make a sacrifice somewhere. Both teams are going to try and do it. It's going to be up to whoever gets there first. So it might be 303rd, actually. There's only three guys left on Castle. From White Fox. Two Rusty, guys. Rusty, where are you covering right now? Covering down right on top of storage right now. Yep, I see you. That, that fob kill by 303rd might... Might be able to... Might have been the, the move We're at here. 222 now. What are you guys at? 268. Okay. So not too big a difference. If they're a third on storage, you can hold this as long as they possibly can. They can, should be able to cat back uh, Castle. We might just reset to where we were a minute ago before the stalemate happened. Um, sometimes that happens. With 303 getting Castle back and White Fox yeah. getting storage back? Getting, yeah, we might just reverse back to where we were. But, but 303's got some guys out in the southwest holding off some of those other guys, so... Yeah, well, they but, just left a whole bunch of guys the east, east side right now, White Fox moving in. Yep. You got Rain Squad. Yep, and uh, there's <clears> nobody <throat> left from uh, White Fox up north on Castle, so they sh they're going to reverse yep. back to where they were. Banshee and Slippy Cat going to try to hold down storage together, see how that goes. Yep. Good play, scared both teams there for a second, but I think it's just going to reverse back to... Yeah, White Fox now capping, they get the neutral on storage. Uh, grenade just took out Banshee. Almost had that. Flippy Cat went down two. Two grenades both, went in there. Both teams reacted immediately. <laughs> now, now they kind of reset everybody. So you can assume when you're at, in, in three or thirds position on Castle, you can assume that they uh, pulled everybody back down south to storage. And uh, White Fox is assuming the same thing that three or thirds doing the same thing. So this kind of gives you a, a, a clean slate to start, you know, maneuvering again. But, you can see actually now, I can see Infidel Rage, Ramloy, and all them, that big 303rd squad to the north of uh, Storage heading towards Castle right now. Sure. They're pulling back just in case. By the way, to the uh, streamer audience out there, we're going to give away a uh, squad key today uh, at the end of our second match. So if, if you got no people you want to uh, get a, a squad key and get playing with you, stick around, throw your name in the hat, and... Maybe you guys can win a uh, copy of Squad to give away to a friend's, or if you don't have one yourself, you can get one. Yeah, you know, last time we only had 30 people or so. All you got to do is enter something in chat when we uh, when we announce the giveaway, and we only had about 30 people last time, so your chances are actually pretty decent in terms of, uh, you know, a giveaway. Yeah, not competing against like a thousand people or something that are watching yeah, the stream yeah, right. to get one. Yep. There you go. Through a third to Castleback. Now we're pretty much starting on a clean slate here. So now the forces are massed in the north and the south apiece. Now, from a third or third perspective, and it's also a White Fox perspective, now they've got everybody massed on each side, now they can kind of divvy themselves up again, like they're starting from Maine all over again. So this could be where through a third might be able to turn it around here. So we're 213 on this side. 264. 264. We got through a third oh, calling out a bunch of people south side of storage. So you've got Sanj and uh, X Meow um, kind of watching out there. Well, it looks like Sanj is down, just gave up too. So you've got Bash, Sangs, and uh, Rogue Grenade coming up from the southwest. Got to get that aggression, that speed. In a situation third like this, with Banshee Squad making a big push northwest of storage. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it, you know, you want to spread yourself out and get out there as fast as you can in a situation like this with this clean slate. They seem like they're making better concentrated efforts to move as squads on here than, than they did the last match. Right. For instance, these guys come down on storage right now. We're just out to and see who's now watching. <laughs> hmm. Oftentimes, actually all the time, um, it comes down to the team that communicates the most and moves the fastest. You, know, you get to a position, a more important, you know, pivotal position faster than the other team, you can control that, that area, you know, and make the pushes you need to make. Right. One thing so, I always I see in, you when, I'm your toes. when I'm specking pub matches and when I'm specking squad league matches, one thing I see with clans is uh, the ability to fight off objective. Um, I think in Publix, you know, you're kind of drawn to just go run towards the objective, but we see that if you want to dictate the pace of the battle and control the battle, 
your best bet is to fight off objective, you know, to hit your enemy on the flank. And we see a lot of that, um, you know, on OP. Yeah, there's a lot of fighting down in storage, but you can see right now, skirmishing in the forest is... Uh, the majority of it. Is the majority Absolutely. of these matches. There's been maybe a, a, t a couple tiny little fights on storage. That was when they rushed back in. That was it. The rest of it's been fought in the forest around it. We're seeing Milt from Bad now and Banshee peeling off to the left to uh, get into storage now. Breaking yep. contact with the firefight. They're trying to get their guys back in there. Looks like White Fox has cleared out all of the remaining three hundred third guys side. down to the south. 256. It looks like they're just getting a body count down there. So 303rd pushed out of the south. White Fox doesn't have to worry about them down there anymore. They can pull their resources off of that and focus on their objectives. Pretty spread out still. Yeah. Still that one operational fob up for White Fox down there in Fox Strat 9. How about uh, 303rd? Do they have a fob up? Uh, they've got one in uh, B4, around that area. B4, okay. Okay, that's where they're coming from, I see. And just, I'll throw it out there, sometimes we've, in past streams, we've talked a little too much at length at this sometimes, but just know everything you're kind of looking at right now when it comes to the to the HUD UI is, is work in progress. This will all change. Yep. And and there'll be a whole host of other features that'll help all of us out, help you, the audience, out, um, to including going first POV or GoPro cams so that we can get down there in the match and you can see, you know, people like squad leaders moving in on objectives and stuff like that. So just throw that out there. If it, there's anyone new that hadn't quite caught us yet, that you're not looking at anything remotely close to the final uh, look and feel of what what squad league will be for squad itself. Right. So lots to come in the future on that. Definitely. We're growing with squad. We have, we have been talking about getting that battle record um, up and running for the clan so that we can distribute basically a file that you load into squad and you can then rewatch in real time any match that we uh, record with the battle recorder. And that'll be, of course, available to the clans first. But, you know, just imagine in a couple of years that we can have archives of some of our best matches and go back and watch those matches in real time. I mean, that's just, uh, that's going to be pretty something special. Definitely. It'll, it'll work well for our recaps too. You know what I mean? To, to, to do better recaps on these matches. So if someone wants to watch a five, 10 minute clip of, of some rounds and stuff, we get yeah. that battle recorder going. The I mean, highlight video. It'll be right. awesome. I mean, to just go blow their eyed and, you know, kind of big Scott, big scheme. I think esports is as a growing trend. You know, we're seeing more and more esports now actually raised in the national news and things. You know, so any tools that can help games get, you know, make it easier for esports and for people to be able to show all the fun that people are having. I mean, you know, we've got we've got like 40 guys now in a game and 120 people on stream, all you know, just watching a match between two two clans clashing. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, I mean, this whole weekend we've got. What was the number, Rusty? Like 100 and something members of clans playing this weekend? Yeah, it's about 150 players this, just this weekend. Damn, that's awesome. It takes a lot more coordination for a game like this for these guys to actually be good versus, you know, your 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 Counter Strikes, Call of Duty types. It's totally different strat meta strategy in these, these games. What, what oh, are it's like Rome to war, but where the soldiers don't just follow the orders, they're actually moving as individuals. Yeah, definitely. Right. Well, like I said before, there's like two levels with, with squad. You've got a strategic level and a tactical level. So, you know, strategy, obviously, the larger, bigger picture, moving the squads in different strategic positions. And then for the squad leaders, at the tactical level, the small level, moving, you know, being aware of the terrain around you, being aware of where the enemy's at, being aware of what's around you. You know, using your kits in the way they're supposed to be used, you know, Absolutely. positioning your guys the way they're supposed to be positioned just where they're at. You know, like to point out, there's a lot of dead 303 just north of storage. Yeah. Um, you got Rogue Grenade at least out there running around. I don't know if he's got that medic kit, kit or not, but uh, definitely a lot of 303 down right now with the exception of 
couple guys at Castle. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I was saying a second ago, too. You know, uh, playing each kit's strengths and weaknesses with each other. Rogue grenade getting executed. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, playing with those kit's strengths and weaknesses, you know. Because sometimes uh, fights can seemingly devolve into some kind of, you know, Call of Duty just deathmatch close quarters sometimes. Sometimes it happens, but uh, if you get on your guys and make sure you guys know how to use the kits correctly, and you can uh, turn the tide on that. Absolutely. I'm going to say that uh, White Fox is likely aware of the, the fob that uh, <laughs> 303's got that. out here now. Yeah. They, they kind of walked that way and stumbled across 10 plus 303's spawning in. They took Ooh. four of them down. 303rd pulling off the back side of that fob now, getting out of there. White Fox pushing out of um, storage now. 245 for White Fox. 148. But White Fox pulling away. Oxygen Cube. Thanks for the donation, man. Appreciate it. They've been kind of gradually pulling yeah. away every round, it seems. I just say uh, a thank you to all of our donors that have uh, that have donated in the past, that donate today. Um, you know, it, it helps us keep our, st our our servers going, that we can, you know, host all these future matches. We host a server in New York City right now. We host a server in France. So, you know, those donations go a long way towards us uh, making Squad League keep going. You know, whereas clans have a whole bunch of members that help contribute to their own servers, you know, Squad League staff isn't but like 10 guys, you know, and it's it's... Donations go a long way towards helping us uh, live kind of a stress-free environment to, yeah. to, to yeah. host this. It really is for the community, by the community. Absolutely. We're seeing yeah, all, that, all that, that 303rd squad that peeled off from, and didn't contest that rally point now. Uh, two of the guys have just been held by a, an individual white fox man right on the western flank now. But they, they're seeming to uh, peel around now and uh, see if they can get into the storage, behind the storage area now. Yeah, I'd imagine. So one of those guys is still alive is a uh, is one of their squad leads. I mean, imagine they're going to go down there a little bit further south, drop a rally point. But uh, they've been spotted. They've yeah, I was going to say, there's there. a lot of white fox guys over there yeah, that are looking that way. They see him. They see him. Bubbles mostly in rainbow. 300 are still spawning in on their fob. You know, what well, we got point... 136 on this side. Yeah, at what point do you just give up on that? They might be trying to... I haven't seen them pull shovels out, but they might be trying to de-shovel that before White Fox can take it. Only seeing Sangs up right now. White Fox seems to just be grinding them back. They've been making very like strong pushes, it seems like, White Fox. I mean, they've made a couple, but... <laughs> like little victories. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like a bunch of small little, you know, small little battles, and it really seems to favor White Fox. They just seem to be grinding him back. There's not like some big, massive game-winning move. There might have been earlier that 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 push from through a third, getting that that stalemate, was enough to reset the reset the battlefield there. Like I said, um, but all the fighting was just focused on the west side. There's nothing out in the central ridge line in the east of storage. So White Fox was able to just mass all their guys that west side and stop whatever push 303 had. And I think one of the things I love about Squad is it's not just about the tactics. Of it. The tactics have a big influence, but it also comes down to the individual skill of the players and sure. your basic, your basic rifleman skills. You know how good of a shot is that guy? You know not just how many bullets can he put down in a specific area, but can he take the guy out with the first couple of shots? Otherwise, you know, his entire squad would be wiped if he's covering one of the flanks or covering the Al and Charlie. You know, it really comes down to that individual. Yeah. 237 tickets here for White Fox. How are we looking on the 303rd side? We are at 125. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of prep in the background. Uh, for those that don't know... Next match, we've got CML uh, with a couple members of Exodus versus the Redcoats. Uh, Going to be taking place on, pretty sure it's Logar Skirmish. Oh, so, Redcoats. Getting that ready, uh, trying to get them passwords set up for the other server. So IBK, uh, talk to me in the background a little bit. We're just trying to make sure we've got that match set up too so that we can roll right into it.
Not a lot of quad comms going on. Very quiet from both teams. Very, both very of these quiet. Models. Yeah. I like to be quiet sometimes and listen to them talk back and forth, but right. uh, nothing but crickets yep. and explosions. <laughs> okay, so interesting development. 303rd, that fob they've got out there to the west, they've actually dropped a few bunkers on top of it and they're, they're not digging it. So it looks like they're they're digging in out to the west, 303rd. And it's well known by White Fox that it's there, so White Fox is going to keep putting pressure on it till they. We are at there. 111. 234. Just 11 tickets away here. Looks like it's going to be a win there for White Fox. Yeah, I think that's pretty safe to say. I will say memorable move was, I believe it was... Uh, Banshee. I think it was Ban yeah, Banshee's uh, fob hunting squad down there. Yep, they just, sneaked, they just sneaked right in there. That definitely prolonged this match and put 303rd back in the fight. With that one yeah. simple move, just four guys going undetected, getting yep. behind their lines and spooking them enough to pull uh, resources and manpower off of the objective. Yeah, that's that's definitely props to him for that. You know, thinking thinking ahead like that and taking that initiative to take that opportunity and realizing the opportunity was there to, to get in there as fast as he can and put them on their heels really quick. I'd like um, to highlight the, uh, the kill death ratio as well. If we can pull that up, Rusty, just to kind of show. 143 to 60. Oh, yeah. A little bit more of the 2 to 1. Uh, it's pretty We're at 103, so this, this map's about to be over. Pretty Those spread medics. out. Those medics are very, 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 very valuable. Yeah, Very absolutely. valuable. To me, they're, they they almost need to be as, as communicative as any squad leader when it comes to... People saying, "Hey, I'm down. Come get me." You know, and, and medics communicating that they're they're trying to do their jobs and working their way to people. Medics always one of my go-to uh, roles. I love playing the medic because it's yeah, it is so important. You're always the medic. I'm just excited to see a lot of these different kits. That's it. That's Matt. Ah, there we go. So that is the end of nice stuff, guys. Swivel. White Fox versus 303rd. White Fox will move on in the bracket. They have won their quarterfinal. 303rd is eliminated. Very good showing from both teams, though. Very good. Very good. A couple good highlights there. Definitely not blown out on either side. We saw a lot of uh, equal fighting, so um, yeah. definitely not a White blowout Fox. for 303rd. On a lot to the of, semifinals. Yeah, on to the semifinals. So we are going to take a little break here, get CML and Exodus uh, versus the Reds queued up and ready to go. We're going to get those guys loaded. Whoever wins go. that plays White Fox. Just Correct. throwing that out there. Yep, we are in the top of our bracket for our quarterfinals. Uh, if you do want to check our bracket, you can go to squad.gg forward slash bracket and check out our Battlefy bracket there, which should just give you a general overview of who's playing who and when. Uh, times and stuff, are, of course, are posted as they become available. We are um, always having to find the best schedule for these clans. So we've got a, another match coming up shortly. CML. Exodus. Logar Skirmish. Versus Redcoats on, yeah, on uh, Logar Skirmish. So that is going to be a very exciting map. Very tight and dirty map on that one. Very great, tight and Great dirty, map absolutely. to cover down on. Yep, so we're going to take just a short break here, get these guys ready to go, and we will be back, be back soon. Thanks, guys, for watching. We will see you in a few.